Okay, y'all. Love and Hip Hop, New York. The final hour, darling. It's over with. Benito, part two. Love and Hip Hop, uh, season six, I believe. Six, eight, seven, eight, whatever. Okay, let's get to the reunion part two. Okay, we got Amina Butterfly. Black Butterfly. And, you know, they getting into her, talking to her. You know, we left off first, um, the first part of the reunion where she was pregnant. She revealed to the world that she was pregnant or whatever. Um, and, you know, Tara, she going in and in on her, talking about you crazy or whatever. How you aborted a baby, then you gonna turn right back around and get pregnant like this? Uh, that's crazy. Like Amina Butterfly was like, "Look, yo, uh, we was irresponsible, me and Peter, and uh, you know things happened, and I ended up getting pregnant. It wasn't planned, you know. Everybody was like, look, this is like a tug of war, tick for tat thing. Like you going back and forth. Uh, that's what Peter's daughter said. Peter's oldest daughter, um, who was there." And they was just going back and forth saying, you know, basically that, you know, you ain't shit and, and Amina, you're a mistress and this and that and yada, yada. Amina and Tari, y'all are both stupid. Um, and so, I mean, there you go. What bothers me the most about Tara is that Tara sits there and like she better than Amina when she's not. You're not better than her, Tara, at all. Amina still got a ring on it. What did you get? And you was with this man for like 13, 14 years. You got nothing but dick. Good dick, I'm sure, because you kept having kids. But that's all you got. You didn't. He didn't never put a ring on your finger. You know? And she sits up there and act like she's so much better than Amina. But like Amina said, we're both the same. We're one and the same. We're on the same level. And they asked Amina, the, um, the host, uh, Nina Parker, she asked uh, Amina, she was like, look, would you ever go back to Peter? Apparently, I mean, and I moved out and all that. And she was just like, you know, if he ever gets his stuff together and this stupid, all these, both of them just dumb, 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 diggity, 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 dumb. All right. So we get into Cardi B little segment, which was really funny. Um, you know, she had her mom and she was just like, you know, she appreciated everybody liking her. She's just being herself, yada, yada, yada. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you know, all of a sudden Peter, he decides to chime in and he was just like, you know what? Women talking like Cardi B and hoeing and showing their ass and stuff. Like, I don't appreciate that. Cardi B read his ass for filth. Cardi B was like, are you serious? Like, really? Like you the, you the kind of dudes that I be talking about. No, you the kind of dudes that I be talking about. Like you got both of your both of these women that you claim you love or whatever you got both of them up on here looking stupid yo all you got all they got is babies that's all they got like they ain't got nothing else they just got babies and you up here playing them or whatever so hell i'm gonna play dudes or whatever dudes play chicks all the time you know remy she came in um you know trying to intervene and basically to sum it up um what cardi b was saying you know because sometimes you know it's she can't really get her point across. It's kind of hard to understand her. Um, she, uh, Remy Ma was just like, yo, Peter, this is what she's talking about. She was like, yo, no, you fucking around with me. Like, we not exclusive. We not girlfriend to boyfriend. I know you messing around with other chicks or whatever. What you mean? I can't wa even wash my ass. You can't even give me a rat to wash my ass. This shit ain't serious. We fucking around. I'm getting what, I'm getting what you want. I'm giving you what you want. You giving me what I want. And that's it. Like, why can't you just admit to that and all that stuff? I completely understand what they're saying. Um, and, you know, the creep squad is just a mess. Peter and Cardi pretty much get into it really bad. They start calling each other names. Peter gets up and gets escorted off stage or whatever. It got really ugly. But Cardi B was just giving it back to him. Peter Guns is a fungus. All the creep squad. Well, I don't, what I don't get about the creep squad is that none of them... Or fall out of your seat fine. And they're all ancient. So I don't I don't get the appeal with them. I really don't. It's just a bunch of old ass uncles that's out here still hoeing and pimping. When all of them at the end of the day ain't gonna be ain't hoes end up alone at the end of the day once it's all said and done because you done schemed and and and, and tried and did everybody wrong. All that's coming back to you eventually in some way, shape, or form. It might not affect you directly. 
It might affect a family member, a friend, whatever, but it's going to hit close to home with you. You know, Eventually, at some point, when you're least expecting, at least expecting it, you can't treat people any kind of way and expect some kind of positive result. Life don't work like that. That's that's and and, and that, that ain't popping in New York. That ain't, that don't happen in New York. So anyway, um, we get into um, DJ Self and another member of the Creep Squad. All these niggas is just lame, yo. Like anyway so we get into dj south we got um uh, rose up there you know the um beauty bar chick you know the dominican chick who was messing with who was throwing the pussy in his face real thirsty real thirsty we got yorma who dj self was actually with yorma look great with blonde hair she looks great with blonde hair and that's something that's the new york coming out so um anyway uh, they was talking or whatever, and um, Cardi B and you know Nina. She asked Cardi. She was just like, "Yo, how'd you feel after that whole fighting this and that?" And and she was just like, "Look, I ain't never heard about Shorty. Like, you know, basically what I what I got from it was that Cardi B was saying she really ain't got nothing personally against Yorma, but the fact that she was still fucking around with DJ Self, and the fact that Cardi B knows what kind of dude he is." Then that's cool, you know, this punishment enough and she likes that or whatever. Um so they're going back and forth. Uh they asked uh DJ Self, did she, did he ever sleep with Rose? And he was just like he don't remember. It's just stupid. These dudes are ugh. See, I was getting ready to say retarded, but I don't really like to say that word. So, you know, I mean, whatever. They it's just it's just the fool, you feel me? All right, um, let's see, y'all. Um, um, DJ Self, you know, he they was talking. They was like, "Yo, he got a lot of flack because he was laughing and you on my face when she was, you know, pouring out her heart to him because she was upset because she had just went. Her and her sister had just went to the beauty bar and showed down on Rose and her homegirl, and she was just like, you know, I had no idea that she was cheating on me. Yada yada. He was trying to grin and he was just like, I just had a smile on my face. These niggas are stupid, like." I don't know how many times I'm gonna say that throughout this video. Like these girls really need to find their worth, like for real. Like you don't have I swear to God, like I promise you, life is so much life is just as hard if you by yourself. Like and so why be with somebody that's gonna do you like that? Like I don't get that. Like you just adding more stress, more drama into your situation. It's already stressful and drama is hard out here to make it in this world. Especially if you of color. Especially if you come from nothing. Like, are you serious? Like, it's crazy. And us in New York, like, it's hard out here, you feel me? It's crazy. But, um, let's see. That was pretty much it, y'all. That was pretty much, you know, what happened with that. And your machine with him and yada yada DJ self ain't really said much. It's a waste of time, a waste of air, a waste of breath. All of them just, you know, needs their dicks thrown upon the floor. Seriously. All right. So we get into the final thing, which is basically Yandy. Um, and we got Samantha, one of Mandisi's baby mothers. We got her mother, um, Kim. And then we got uh, Mandisi's mother. Uh, her name is... Uh, what's Mandisi's mother? Whatever, it don't matter. It's Mendeecee's mom. That's what it is. Um, They show the whole scene of Mendeecee's going to jail. And, um... Well, no. Let me get to this first. Um, okay. It's some. It's three boys and a girl. All I know is it. Uh, the little girl is named Skylar. That's by Gandy. She got a little boy. And then it's, you know, Asim and Amir... I think Amir's Yandy's and Asim is um another one. Then there's little Mandisi's. I don't it's real fucking confusing. Anyway, it's three baby mamas. The Kim girl, she wasn't there. That's the quiet. That's the nice baby mama. She wasn't there. Um, and she just pretty much go with everything. Apparently Yandy oversteps her bounds, according to the Samantha. 
um, that baby, the lighter skin baby mother, um, and you know, accordingly, apparently, Yandy oversteps her bounds. She just goes and picks up um, him from school and this and that. She don't tell him. Yeah, and you can't be picking up other people's kids. Like, I realize they brothers and sisters and all that, but you still got to run that through the mother. But apparently the mother, Samantha, she don't be taking care of the baby like that anyway. The oldest son, she don't do shit, you know, and um, apparently she went to jail. She had a whole set it off. Queen Latifah, Kimberly Elise, Jada Pickett Smith, Vivica A. Fox moment. You know, she was setting it off or whatever. She was robbing banks. She was, robbing, you know, apparently, allegedly, she was. She hit up Wells Fargo. You feel me? Bank of America. You feel me? Wood Forest. You know, she hit up all of them or whatever. And I was just like, damn, I'm glad I don't work at a bank when that chick was out there scheming or whatever. And she very much so ain't got no sympathy for Mandisi. She was just like, yo, I did my shit. He need to do his shit on up to his shit. Uh, but I can definitely see Yandy being a little overbearing. And she's not going to apologize for it. Yandy puts on this prim and proper role like she's better in a sense. That's why her and Tyra are friends. They both act like they're better than people when they're not. You know, Yandy, we both know that you just as ratchet as the rest of them. You just reserved ratchet. That's all it is. And you reserve shady. You're not openly shady. You're quietly shady. You're sneak, sneaky shady. That shit Lanithia Leaks was talking about. You feel me? So anyway, we still sitting up there looking at Yandy in that blonde hair. A mess. Um, and, and the Samantha lady. And, you know, all of a sudden... Medici's mom said that bitch went to jail talking about Samantha and her set it off moments. All of a sudden, Kim's mama, who's a stud, gets up. You know, she takes off her suit. She's real. She's a strong. She's a strong lady. She takes off her suit and everything. And she goes in. She's popping and bopping all around the damn stage. You know, trying to fuck it up and trying to get over to Medici's mama. That bitch is crazy and this and that it was just crazy. Samantha got a stone face the whole time. She's just very hard. She don't agree at all with the kids going to see Mandisi's in jail. Remy Ma and Pap was on stage and she was just like, look, you know, my son was seven years old when I left for jail. And so, you know, that was the best thing that I could say that he came and saw me. That That's a positive thing, you feel me? And they just didn't want to hear that. It was just like, we're trying to protect that boy from all that. And I get that. You know, hopefully all them baby mothers and mothers can, and baby mothers of mothers can, you know, get along and all that shit. Like, it was just craziness. Um, I really don't know what to say about that. But hopefully they can all just get along. Because, man, DC's got like, I think he got like eight years or so. So he got a while, so them kids gonna grow up for real. And all those little kids look just alike. It's so crazy. All of them look just alike. Even though they all got different mamas. Except for Yandy's too. But, you know, it's crazy. Um, let's see. Uh, did anybody have any final thought? What was weird was when Nina Parker asked anybody, did anybody got any final thoughts? Um, I think the only person she went to was uh rich dollars i think and maybe somebody else and and did she go to again i don't know it was just two people she was usually they go all around and ask the cast but she didn't do that i guess it was running out of time you know that that the budgets or whatever um but peter guns he definitely not peter guns rich dollars he definitely made a statement that i thought was shocking he was just like look i'm in love with molice monice slaughter and I'm going back to L.A. and get my girl. So I guess, you know, it's just sin that um, Rich Dollars is probably going to be on the next season of Love Hip Hop Hollywood, I'm assuming. So that's going to be crazy. I actually, in a weird way, I actually like Rich Dollars with Monice. Because as crazy and, and bugged out as Monice is in the head, I actually like her. But as crazy as bugged out as Monice is in the head, you know... She ain't never had no dude to stand up for her. And I think that her and Rich are good together. Whatever that is. Whatever they do together is what they do together. But I think they're good together. I think she he likes her crazy or understands her. So, you know, everybody needs love at the end of the day. You feel me? All right. Um. So, uh, Remy Ma performed in this little tight-ass sequence jumpsuit moment. It was so tight. Like, she was so pulled. She looked good though, but she was she was pulled. The breaths are hard. 
Tell me how you supposed to breathe with no air, Remy. With no air, Remy. With no room to breathe, Remy. It was crazy. I thought the performance was okay. You know, real low budget-ish. You know, the dancers was... You know, it was just a ratchet holiday is what I can say. Um, but that was the end of Love and Hip Hop New York. I love y'all or whatever. Thank y'all so much, yo. For real. Real talk. Real shit, my nigga. Thank y'all so much for rocking with me with this Love and Hip Hop New York. I ain't never reviewed Love and Hip Hop New York. Ever. I never thought I would. The shit didn't interest me. I was like, yeah. You know, especially once, you know, uh, Kim Bella them left and... and uh and Chrissy and and all that I was just like I was over it was like nah this ain't my jig but you know I'm here for whatever um and thank y'all for watching this and liking the videos and, and being here for my reviews or whatever I'm gonna try to review uh Love and Hip Hop Atlanta we back in here I didn't review last season I didn't look at last season Love and Hip Hop um Atlanta um but I'm gonna try to work it out this season um, I just wasn't into all those new characters and stuff, and I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, it's the Chalaki. It's the Chalaki on YouTube. Follow me, Google Plus, all that. Uh, Chase King was here on Facebook at It's Kings World on Instagram and Twitter at It's Kings World eighty nine on Snapchat. You feel me? All right, we out. New York. I love New York. Ah.